It is really hard to keep up with David Segura's development of OSD Cloud, but I'm giving it a go and I'm recording as many videos as I can about this. So the main thing that happened last week, or technically still this week, is uh, OSD script pad or OS deploy pad or OSD pad um, it was released. But one of the things that was snuck in was quick setup. So I want to quickly go through that, that with you now so you can get set up nice and quickly. And David's made this incredibly easy to do. So let's start. So as you can see on OSD Cloud main website, we've got quick setup. It's accessed by this link here. What you find when you go into this is that it says if you're looking to quickly get OSD Cloud running and you have all the requirements met, then get started here. Now the thing is, that's a bit of a gotcha because you can't get started unless you've got the requirements met and you need to do some requirements. So let's jump into that and see how that works. So as you can see, we've got this requirements section here just in the get started collapsible menu here. So if we click on get started and go into requirements, the requirements are really, really simple. We have Windows 10 x64, admin rights, internet, and the module. So let's grab this and run this on our PowerShell. Okay, so that's done. Now, obviously I'm running this today, which is the 13th of August, and that means I've got the latest version that has been released. And that's apparently what you need for this to work. So if we go back to the quick setup guide, you can see we've got requires OSD PowerShell module 21811. Uh, I hope I've got that version. Let me check. Uh, so we'll just get get uh, okay. So I've got 21811.4, so that will do. So back over to the quick setup. We need admin rights, which I've got. So we do, we do OST help, OST cloud setup. Okay, so what it's done is it's opened up uh, OSD pad on the other screen, as you can see there. I'm gonna drag it over to my main PowerShell screen here. And what you get is this drop down here where you can have a look at the other scripts that are available, or you've got this um, this setup script here. So let's just take a look. That's the README. I got you. That's a README. Good. So then we've got um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and quick setup. So let's do quick setup and take a look at what we get. So it's going to enable Wi-Fi, enable. Um, Dell VMware and Wi-Fi start OSD GUI, and it just does just does these things here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change that to my uh, F drive because I don't want it to fill up my C drive, um, and I don't actually have any Dell machines, so I'm going to get rid of that, uh, which makes these things wrong. Okay, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's see if that's all we need to do. Because if that's all you need to do, then that really has very much shortened all of my previous videos on OSD Cloud. Let's take a look at what it's doing. So just to recap then, while it's running through the save windows image um, f function, uh, I mean, I've run two commands now. I, I opened PowerShell in Windows Terminal, ran the command to install the OSD PowerShell module, and then run OSD help, OSD cloud setup, and then chose quick setup and, and pressed run, which realistically is about... 30 seconds work and then you wait for this to finish off doing all the downloads and all of the, the generation of the templates and, and creating the ISO for you. Um, I'd say that was pretty quick to get started. It's doing something on the screen so we'll go back to, um, to see what it's doing now.
All right, so that's done. And, and it seems to have given some warnings on the screen there around moving the autopilot JSON files. So that is something David has been quite clear about in, in tweets that he's put forward and also in this message here, if you, if you read through it with me. So it says essentially what has happened here is that we've the script has copied the, the, uh, the autopilot profiles from program data OSD cloud autopilot profiles to somewhere very similar, but instead of autopilot profiles, it's config autopilot JSON. Now it's not removed the old the old folder, and essentially so this message that will pop up every time you run this script until you've removed uh, this old deprecated folder, and the warning time will increase from uh, ten seconds to something astronomical if you don't um, if you don't remove that folder, which you know is fair enough. So, and then it says again at the bottom, move all of your autopilot profiles from the old location. Uh, and then, it does actually say you'll be unable to create or update an OSD cloud workspace until it's removed. I mean, that's a fairly, that's a fairly big, big warning we've got there. So, um, I'm going to go to the old place, which is this one here, and see if I've actually got that there. And I do. Right, so to delete that, I'll just do remove item um, profiles, and I might as well get rid of autopilot as well. So I'll remove, oops, remove item autopilot. Okay, that's all gone. So yeah, it seems if, as though it's stopped. Um, me carrying on with this process because it just started the new OSD cloud workspace and then gave this warning and then errored out. So, um, yeah, we'll start this again then now that we've cleaned up the old folders. So, if we do a quick setup, we have this one here again. I'm just going to remove the references to Dell because I don't want it to download all the drivers for me. Um, and I really would like it to work in, in the F drive if we can. So we'll do uh, run from there. And let's see how this works a second time round with the, the old workspace cleaned up with all of the autopilot stuff that's needed to be changed since the, since the August release. Yeah, okay, so here it is moving on through to the new OST Cloud workspace and it skipped past the warning around the autopilot profiles being in the way. Uh, and now it's going through putting it on the, putting all the content on the F drive like I asked it to. So that's really good news. And so while it grabs the Wi-Fi drivers from the internet. Let's take a look at the OSD cloud folder. Um, and you can see it's put all this content on here, so that's really good news. There's a media folder that I'm hoping will contain, uh, in fact, the OSD cloud um, folder will contain the ISO that I need to boot my virtual machines. So let's see how this goes. Great, so a lot of good info here on the screen. It says start OSD cloud GUI is adding start OSD cloud GUI to the start net command and that is essentially the thing that runs when the when the the build of uh, of OSD cloud finishes. Okay so that's done. We'll review what it says on the screen in just a few seconds. Uh, what I want to do first though is just show you the uh, the thing I forgot to mention on this um, OSD cloud setup screen. The first thing that it shows you is the readme and I completely didn't read the readme, which probably is a bad thing. So it says these are the the requirements for running OSD Cloud. Uh, essentially, it's Windows 10 x64, admin rights, uh, open internet, the ADK, and the ADK WinPE add-on. Obviously, in order to get this far, you would have needed to have the OSD Cloud module installed, or the OSD module installed. So that's that's kind of uh, assumed that that's working. But those are the core requirements to be able to run this script. 
So on the screen, we have, uh, what does it say it's done? So it's put a lot of files in here and it's got this no prompt ISO that it popped into OSD Cloud for me. And yeah, let's take a look at what it's got. So in here, there's our ISO there and our no prompt ISO. I'm just gonna grab the location for the no prompt ISO and then we'll build a virtual machine to see how that has helped our process. I'm just gonna put this in the um, Can't do can't do this while I'm talking. Apologies for that. I'm just going to put that in the ISO for the uh, start media, and then we'll see how this goes. One of the things I will say about OSD Cloud at this stage is that this process, this bit here where we're booting from the from the ISO, does seem to take quite a long time for me on my virtual machines and my and on my physical machines actually, and. Um, it always makes me think, is it working or is it not? But yeah, it, it appears that it does take a little while to work. Um, but there we go. So this has a, has a no prompt flag set. So I'm expecting there to be less prompts for the user or the engineer or the admin at this stage. So we'll see how far it gets us and what it brings up without me clicking any buttons or doing anything, which is... Um, it's kind of one of the goals and really one of the use cases is to get this out to your engineers so you can build machines in the field without them needing to know PowerShell or know, um, know anything difficult to, for them to learn. You know, these guys might be fresh out of, out of college or fresh out of school and just want to get machines built with those to, to give them some experience. So this potentially is one of the use cases and hopefully using this quick setup we can have the base for doing that. So the last thing I saw on the screen there was start OSD Cloud GUI. So I'm assuming that in a few seconds, hopefully we'll see OSD Cloud GUI and there it is. Okay, so let's run through this step by step. The top line is the version of Windows, which we'll go with 21H1, stick with Enterprise and we'll go with ENUS. Um, we haven't got an option to change the volume and it's the image indexes is six so i assume if i change that it'll drop it down to ah the volume is the um is a, a bit of information about the iso not the volume it'll deploy to good so yeah it's the volume and uh, index is six so this would say this currently says microsoft that's because i'm running in hyper v it would say dell or it would say lenovo so we'll leave that as that i think you can change it you can change it change that to Dell and uh, it's a virtual machine good so we wanted to restart the computer after WinPE phase is complete and we could capture the screenshots and because this is a virtual machine I'm gonna choose not to warn before before wiping the disks so hopefully this will just go straight through the build and won't ask me anything it'll just do exactly what we've chosen in this uh, OSD cloud GUI let's give it a go I'm gonna click start and see the magic happen. Okay, so it says WinP is restarting in 30 seconds and uh, I believe it, so it's gonna happen and we've essentially watched all of that uh, complete in just under 25 minutes. And there we have the out-of-box experience. So remember, this was fully downloaded from the internet, all the drivers and, and that kind of thing was were downloaded from the internet. And I only had to write, at the end, I only had to write two commands. That was the import module and OSD help. So I think that's a pretty good improvement on the previous set of instructions that we had to go through to get OST Cloud working. There is some additional things that I want to go through in the next video around troubleshooting, uh, using OSD Cloud, so we'll go into that next time. In the meantime, please hit the like button, and I'll see you next time.